but to the office that each of the 100 senators in this building happens to hold. That Senate vote isn't expected until next week, but later today, the House will be taking their vote on a resolution making clear to the president if he wants to go to war, he'll need Congress to sign off. Now from the U.S., let's head to the U.K. Mapito, the Duke and Duchess of Success, announced yesterday that they will step back as senior royals and work to become financially independent. In a statement, Prince Harry and Meghan also said they plan to split their time between the U.K. and North America. Now, Maybe MFA, more. this comes as a shock to everyone as no other royal including the Queen or Prince William, was consulted before the statement and Buckingham Palace is disappointed. Senior Royals are understood to be hurt by the announcement. Let's take a listen to uh, experts of the statements. We have chosen to carve out a progressive new role within this institution. We intend to step back as senior members of the royal family and work to become financially independent while continuing to fully support Her Majesty the Queen. Now, last October, Prince Harry and Meghan publicly revealed their struggles under the media spotlight. Speaking in the ITV documentary, Harry and Meghan, An African Journey, the Duchess referred to her life under the spotlight on top of just trying to be a new mom or trying to be a newlywed. I would say any woman, when they're, especially when they're pregnant, you're really vulnerable. And so that was made really challenging and then when you have a newborn and especially as a woman it's really it's a lot so you add this on top of just trying to be a new mom or trying to be a newlywed it's um yeah well i guess and also thank you for asking because not many people have asked if i'm okay but it's uh it's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes and the answer is would it be fair to say not really okay since it's really been a struggle yes now, many people have been reacting to this. What are they saying on social media? All right. At Piers Morgan saying that people say I'm too mm. critical of Meghan Markle, but she ditched her family, ditched her dad, ditched most of her old friends, split Harry from William, and has now split him from the royal family. I rest my case. And the last one is from at Kimberly JC, who says, not a fan of the royals, but good on Harry and Meghan taking control of their own lives. What did the Bible say? You leave your mother and your father in Cleveland to well. So there's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. I am MFA Apo. Thanks for your company. Live in word with Dr. Otterbill is up next. So everyone says I'm a Kosia filler, but it's not like I'm nosy. Oh, go out to find out the latest filler. It's just that I get 50 megabytes of data free after paying for only the first minute of every call. And so I just keep discovering stuff minute after minute. That's how come I was minding my business, scrolling through my timeline, and I found out Coco has a new baby. Hmm. Oh, and last week, I learned Ken won the lottery. You see, Ken is my brother's friend. So, hello. Look who's about to vote with the rich and famous. <laughs> Enjoy even more value with MTN Free After One. You only pay for the first minute of your call on MTN Free After One. And the rest is free. Plus, you enjoy free 50 megabytes worth of data to browse your favorite sites. Open where? Open there. So dial star 315 hash to sign up. Good day for you everywhere you go. Terms and conditions apply. of becoming victims of globalization. Not the shakers and the movers that a great man was asked, how do you bring up children? And he said, the first is by example, the second by example, and the third by example. What are the top ten things? Ahmed, I should confess to you, it's a very difficult subject you're handling. If you ever found Kelly anywhere, still as two, the three legs of those two are faith, fruitfulness, and enjoyment. Please don't pull any of these legs out. <laughs> Ten years of reviewing the past, situating the present, and predicting the future. Springboard, your virtual university matriculates at 7 p.m. and graduates at 8 p.m. every Sunday on Joy 99.7 FM. Springboard is a very significant intervention in our national life. The radio program, the virtual university, and the roadshow have become important uh, factors in the development of our human capital. Springboard is
is brought to you by Legacy and Legacy and Joy FM and proudly sponsored by Ecobank, MTN and Central University with support from the graphic business. Hi, this is Sharon Lecter, co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad and the Rich Dad series. Remember to keep listening to Springboard Your Virtual University with Albert Okron. It's going to help you create financial freedom for yourself and your families. Springboard, your personal value will shoot up. Joy 99.7 FM. Hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in word with Pastor Mensah Otobil. And now, today's word. So, Joash comes to Elisha. And when he sees him, he says the same thing that Elisha had said. The chariots of Israel... And their horsemen. The difference between what Joash said and what Elijah said is that Elijah saw it before he said it. He saw the chariots and said it. We are not told that Joash saw it. So he's just saying something because he knows big people say these things. He's, he's saying it because he realizes, well, if you say well, these kinds of words, good things happen to you. So he can't perceive it, but he's saying it. The chariot of Israel and their horsemen. And the other difference between what Joash says and what Elisha says is that Elijah, Elisha in his time uses singular. The chariot of Israel. He said the chariots, plural. That may mean probably that uh, Elijah or Elisha has a double portion of what Elisha had. So he has more uh, available. So if you were in Joash's Stead, you would know that at this moment, I'm about to receive something big. It is what is on Elisha. But what is on Elisha is double of what was on Elijah. Now, by simple calculation, it means that I can also receive a double of what was on Elisha. That would be such a powerful thing. So he starts and says the right things. And Elisha begins to walk him through a process. And there are a few things there I want to explain what they mean. There are five symbols there that I want to explain. The first one is the arrow. He said to him, pick some arrows. The arrows, Elisha explained as symbolizing God's deliverance. God's deliverance. The arrow represented God's deliverance. In other words, the arrow is a symbol that God is going to deliver Israel from Syria. That's the first thing. The second thing is the bow. He said, don't just pick arrows, but pick a bow. A bow is a symbol for battle and warfare. The arrow is a symbol of deliverance. The bow is a symbol of warfare. And I hope you know what... Uh, a bow is. It's always good to explain these things to people since we don't use them normally. Uh, the, the bow is the part that launches the arrow. Now, if you see a bow, bow and arrows, I suppose you have an idea. The, the, the relationship between arrows and bow is like the relationship between bullet and gun. The weapon, the real weapon is the bullet. The real weapon is the arrow. But the one which launches the weapon is the gun or the bow. Now, when we are showing a symbol of war, we don't show bullet. We show the gun. Although the gun doesn't kill, it's the bullet that does the damage. But the gun is a symbol. So, the the arrow is a victory. Deliverance, the bow 
It's warfare. So God is telling uh, Joash, you're going to get victory, but it's going to come through warfare. You're not just going to sit around doing nothing and all of a sudden things are happening to you. You're going to fight. There's going to be a warfare. There's going to be a battle. There has to be some contention for what God is about to do for you. The third thing I want you to know is when he had the bow and arrow, Elisha told him to put his hand or hold the bow and arrow or to the bow. Joash's hand. Joash's hand represent his strength and his power. What Elisha is telling Joash is that you're going to be personally and directly engaged in this battle. You're going to lead your people into it. You are not going to outsource this battle to somebody else. You know, there are people who outsource their battles. They want somebody else to fight their battle for them. They want somebody else to help them live their life. They want somebody else to help them overcome their problems. But God is saying to Joash at this time, you're going to have deliverance. It's going to come through a battle and you are going to fight that battle. Nobody will do it for you. So there will be deliverance. There will be battle and your hand will accomplish it. You, you will get involved. The fourth thing you see in that story is Elisha's hand. Elisha's hand, he said... Uh, the Bible says when Joash put his hand on the bow, Elisha put his hand on the hand of Joash. Very interesting. Elisha did not put his hand on the bow. He put his hand on Joash and Joash had his hand on the battle. In other words, you're going to fight this battle, but I'm going to be here with you. I'm going to be supporting you. And that hand of Elisha represents prophetic direction and mentorship. I'm going to be there with you. Now it's interesting. There will Elijah was Elisha was going to die after that. How was he going to be there? In the same way as Elijah departed, but his double portion rested on Elisha. Even after he was dead, the impact of his ministry was going to continue to help Joash until he won victory. So there's going to be prophetic direction and there is going to be mentoring to help him to overcome. And the final symbol you find in that story is the east window. The east window uh, represents access to divine favor access to divine favor. In the Bible, if you read the Old Testament, you realize the east gate, or when they say something is coming from the east, the east window, it always represents the presence of God or access to the presence of God. So, George, you're going to be delivered. You have victory. That's the arrow. The bow, you're going to fight. You're going to fight before you get a victory. But your hand will be involved. You're going to do that battle. You're not going to get some general to lead. You're going to lead this. You're going to do it yourself. But don't be worried because the anointing on Elisha will be on your hand. There will be prophetic direction and mentorship. And as, apart from that, God is opening to you a window. Divine favor. Now, if you were Joash and you were told this, you will probably be very excited that God was going to bring deliverance. So, Elisha gave him a charge. And I want you to listen to the charge. He said in verse 17, open the east window. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. Then he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Afek till you have destroyed them. You must strike till. Don't hold back. You're going to strike, but you must strike till. Syria is destroyed. So, it's very important, and I like the word till. He didn't say you're going to strike and have victory. He says you're going to strike till. It means that there's going to be a continuous effort. It's going to be done over and over. You don't have to hold back until you have total victory. There are four factors that influence our ability to have total victory. 
The first one is vision. How far you can see. How far can you see? Because if you're going to be in something till there is total victory, you have to see the end from the beginning. How far can you see? The second important thing is your hunger. How much do you want? Elisha was hungry for a double portion of Elijah's anointing. That is a huge appetite. But will Joash have the same appetite? Would he also say, I want double, I want to do better, I want to do greater, I want to be bigger. You need hunger. You need energy. How long can you stay? How can you work? To keep winning, you have to have energy. Fighting takes a lot out of you. And to have total victory, you need a lot of energy. A lot of energy. I was watching the Olympics. And I, I was watching the 5,000 meters ladies, women. And there was this Ethiopian lady who had won the 10,000 and set a world record. So she's running a lower race, 5,000. And everybody gave it to her. I mean, if she's won 10,000, she can win 5,000. And she started, they start running the 5,000. And predictably, she takes the lead and opens a huge gap. Getting to about the last round, she lost energy. She lost energy. And uh, a Kenyan girl came from behind and overtook her. And actually a second one also overtook her. She was dead. The problem was not that she didn't know how to run, but energy. 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 Her fire died. Energy. And many of us, we have vision. We have hunger. But our fire dies easily. We lose energy. We quit. We're not able to go till the end. And that's what Elisha said to Joash. This is not going to be just a one-time battle. You're going to stay on this till. You need vision. You need hunger. But you need energy. Everybody say energy. And the fourth thing you need is mastery. Mastery is how well can you do it. To keep winning, you have to complete it. You have to dominate the scene. You need finishing power. Finishing power. That's one of the things I like Mr. Bolt about. Finishing power. When they were running the 100 meters, did you watch the Olympics 100 meters? Gatlin and Bolt. And Gatlin takes off. But somewhere in the middle, finishing power kicks in. And Bolt bypasses everybody. You know, there are people who have beginning power, no finishing power. On your mark, guess and go. They are out there. Everybody, hey, I've won. And everybody starts giving them certificate before the game is over. No finishing power. And then somebody from behind just comes. Some people do so well, play the game so well, but they can't score. That is decorative football. <laughs> very decorative, very beautiful. They play nicely, everybody cheers them, but they always lose. No team in third. If you're going to win in life, it's not how stylish it looks, how beautiful it looks, how well you start. You have to have energy and you have to master the thing. You have to finish it. You have to kill the thing at the end. You have to finish it. Because if you don't do that, 
You be a, a person of effort but no achievement. And God is not just calling us to effort. Effort is good. Hunger is good. Vision is good. But you must finish. You must conquer the thing. You can say I tried. Who says I tried? 